Shalom Aleichem from First Yahudi Messianic Temple here in Lake Placid, Florida. I am his servant, Maria Simpson, and welcome again one more time to the teachings of Hebraic Roots and the Restoration on the End of Days. And thank you for inviting us into your homes, cars, into yourselves, wherever it is that you are at. Because the word said that he is everywhere and what at the same time. And today we need him more than ever. We need his shalom. We need his we need his peace. We need his truth. So we can be free. Because it is written. We will know the truth, and the truth will set us free. Hallelujah. So with that in mind, uh, please, like I said, every time that we are together. Um, have your your Bibles and paper and pen to uh, ready. So when I give you scriptures, uh, so you can confirm what is being said, because um, we hear of many, 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 many today are, are speaking the word, and we really have to know who is speaking the truth, and really who who is speaking lies. Because in the in First Timothy, in First Timothy chapter four, chapter four for, uh, four verse one it says, "Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter days or times, it's be speaking about now, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils." Now we need to ask him t more than ever more than any time in, in, in the history of mankind. We need to ask him more than ever to give us not only revelation knowledge, but to give us a spirit of discernment. We need a spirit of discernment to discern really through what spirit is that person speaking. We need to, we need to know who, who, is, who is speaking lies and who is speaking truth because it says in his world in his word that they're calling truth lies and lies truth darkness for light and light for darkness sweet waters for bitter waters so who is speaking the truth now this is why we have a bible a bible is your best friend it reveals all all the answers to whatever it is that you're asking. Everything is in here. Okay? So we really have to ask to ask him more than ever to really reveal to us who's speaking the truth and who is speaking lies. Hallelujah. Because if the Most High has not sent them, then they are not from the Most High. Do you remember the the the, uh, the the serpent in the Garden of Eden? Now, who, who sent that serpent? And if you notice, it was all about words. It's all about words speaking forth. And what, what the enemy does through false teacher, false, uh, false pastor, false shepherds, is really taking the truth. And what it does, it, it, it kind of plays with it. it. It plays with words, just like the serpent. When the serpent said to Eve, did God really say that you should not eat from all the trees? Of the now he's using what is called reverse psychology. And we really have to ask him to really give us an understanding and to reveal to us and to open our minds, to open our understanding of the scriptures. Hallelujah. In these end times. So with that in mind, let me, um, let me do a prayer because uh, it's very important. Uh, to do a prayer. I believe in prayer, and prayer is the most powerful weapon that we have today. And prayer um, is, is really, we really need to go into prayer more often. Just like the beginning. Yeshua was a, a prayer warrior. He prayed, he gave us an example of how to pray. And he will go into the desert, and he will go by himself to pray, he will fast. So in these last days, we really need to do a lot of praying. A lot of repentance, uh, and really, is is even though you don't you don't see him, but he's there, just like the air we breathe. So, with that in mind, let me just let me just do a prayer. Abba Kadosh, in the name of Yeshua Hamashiach. 
I present all my brothers and sisters right now, Abba Kadosh, that you give them ears to hear, Abba Kadosh, what the Ruch, or what the Spirit is saying, Abba Kadosh, to them. Abba Kadosh, I pray for all those, Abba Kadosh, that are hearing this and all those that are not hearing this, that are written in the Lamb's Book of Life, that you give them a spirit of understanding and a spirit of truth and revelation knowledge, Abba Kadosh, and wisdom, Abba Kadosh, for they are your sheep. And I thank you for the Ruach HaKadosh. I thank you for the Holy Spirit. That he is moving, hallelujah, very, very quickly all over the world. Abba Kadosh, I thank you for giving us your son, your son Yeshua HaMashiach. And I thank you for this day, Abba Kadosh, that you have given us life and that our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Abba Kadosh, I thank you. And this I pray in the mighty name of Yeshua the Messiah. Amen. Now, the title of this, of this message today is called, Who Do You Say That I Am? Now, this is, this is Yeshua. This is Yeshua speaking to his disciples. And with that in mind, let's go to the book of John. Because this is, this, I'm, I'm sorry, the book of Matthew. The book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse, starting on verse number 13. When Yeshua came into the coast of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that the Son of Man am? 14. And they said, Some say that, that thou art John the Baptist, some Elijah, some others Jeremiah, and one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom do you say that I am? And Simon Peter, of course, Peter's always got to be the one that's got to speak before anybody. Because he's, he's got guts. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Messiah, the Son of the living Elohim. And Yeshua answered and said unto him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, that thou art Kepha, Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth, thou shalt bound in heaven. It shall be bound in heaven. And whatever thou shalt loose on the earth, thou shalt loose on heaven. Now, why did Yeshua ask his disciple? Who do men say that I am? Why did he say why? Why did he ask this? The truth of the matter is, if you notice, he said it twice. He says, Whom do men say that I am? Some said, and, and the disciples were saying, uh, well, some say that you're not John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, and one of the prophets. But then in verse 15, he says, Okay. But whom do you, my 12 disciples, say that I am? Now he's asking two questions. Who do men say that I am? But now I don't care what they say about me. I want to know who do you say that I am? The truth is, Yeshua does not really care what people or others or society or the secular world or the world or the government say about him because he really doesn't care. Okay, but what he really cares is who do you say that he is? Who do you as a child of the living Elohim say that he is? For he is the king of Israel. Now, it's not enough to know what others say about Yeshua because the truth always prevails. And really, the word prevail means it always triumphs. It, uh, it has victory. The truth will always have the power against any source. Why is that? Because, see, there's nothing beyond the truth. There, there's nothing. There's a lot underneath the truth, but beyond the truth, there's nothing else that, that, that come against that. So, see, since Yeshua spoke only the truth, the truth always wins. The truth always has victory. All the time. Now, you must, okay, you must know 
you must know, you must understand, you must accept for yourself that he is the Messiah. You must move from curiosity to commitment. You must move from ad uh, admiration to adoration. Now, what does the word Messiah mean? The word Messiah means the anointed one. The anointed one. He was anointed to come and to die for the nation of Israel. Of course, some of you, maybe you might not know. And you probably think that Israel thinks of Jews. No. Israel is a mixed multitude. They are Jewish, they're Christian, there's all over. He called, he says, I did not come. I came only for the house, for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And to destroy all the works of, of, of the devil. So see, Messiah means that Yahweh, the Father, anointed him to die for our sins. Meaning to die for every time we broke the commandments. That was, that was his mission here on earth. That was, his, that was his calling. Because once he did that, he will resurrect. And now he's on the right hand of the Father. He's interceding. He's, he's, he's an advocate. He's a lawyer for us. He's the high priest in the heavenly, in the, in the heavenly places, which, is, which is, means in the heavenly places. In the Holy of Holies. He's the high priest. Interceding and bringing to his Father our name. He's interceding. He's praying for us. He knows what we're going through. He understands because the same thing that you and I are going through, he went. So see, Messiah means that he has been anointed. That is his robe. Hallelujah. So see, who do you say that he is? Whom do you say that he is? That's the question. Whom do you say? Well, he's, he's the Messiah and he died for my sins. Well, there's more than that. There's more than that. It's, it's, just, it's not just that he's the Messiah and he died for your sins. Yeah, that is who he is, but he's more than that. And we'll see a little bit, a little bit further who really he is. Now, now, who, now this is Yeshua saying to all his 12 disciples that are before him. And by the way, these 12 disciples are going to be reigning over the 12 tribes of the house of Israel in the New Jerusalem. Biblically speaking, is that's the book of Revelation. He's saying, I understand what these men are saying. I am this. See, he is not a friend of the world. He is not a friend of the world because the world does not know him. The world does not care about him. But in the world are his children. That's who he wants to know. Who do you say that I am? Now, of course, there's 12 disciples, which means the number 12 means a government. 12 means government. A government. Okay? So now you've got 12 disciples, and all of them are saying all this except for one. Kepha, Peter. He says, who do you say I am? Now he's telling, he's asking all the 12. But notice out of those 12, only one spoke up. Notice that only Peter, Kepha, out of the 12, said this. Look at what he says. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Messiah, the son of the living Elohim. And Yeshua answered and said unto him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona. For flesh and blood has not revealed this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. How interesting it is that there were 12 men, and out of these 12 men, only one, the Father, revealed it to him. Because see, revelation knowledge of the Bible cannot be revealed through the flesh. It has to be revealed in your spirit. If you do not come in the spirit and in truth, he cannot reveal it to you. He cannot. He cannot reveal it to us. So when he said this, and the only one that spoke was Kepha, was Peter, that you are the son of the living Elohim. Yeshua said, flesh and blood has not revealed it unto you, but my father which is in heaven. Now, how is it possible that these 12 men are 
eating with him. They're laughing with him. They're, they, they sleep and when they have to sleep. They laugh together. And he's teaching all this. And only one out of the 12 disciples received this knowledge. Well, brother and sister, the same thing is happening now. A lot of his children do not know really, really what Messiah means. They only know that he died on the cross, that he's the son of God, and he resurrected, and he has some, but there's more to that. Now look at, look at, look at what Yeshua said to Peter. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Verse 19. And I will give to you, see, now this is, this is Yeshua speaking to Peter. I will give to you the keys of the kingdom. Of, he says keys, not key, keys, keys, more than one. Keys, keys, open doors. I will give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever you will bind on earth, it shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you will lose on earth, it shall be loose in heaven. Now, what are these keys? There is more than one. Keys, open doors. Okay, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Keys is a representation of, of many things. It's a key that opens up, but it's a representation of knowledge. It's a representation also keys. What also it means wisdom, wisdom, knowledge. It's a representation that also it represents musical notes, keys. You know the musical notes are called keys. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Okay, so keys also represents when we worship him. When we worship him, he loves to be in the, in the praises, it is says, in the praises of Israel. So we open doors when we sing to him, when we worship him. So it's wisdom, it's knowledge, it's, it's the keys of musical notes. Because he's a spirit. We also are a spirit and, and also flesh. Hallelujah. Now. It says in the Bible that we have to. It says blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm. Did you know in, in, in the Old Testament they would sound the alarm. Or they would, they would uh, sound the trumpet. And the trumpet in Hebrew is called shofar. The shofar. Depending on the sound it will make, it will either mean you have to get out so we can move. We got to get up. We have to get as warriors so we can fight. Or we got the victory or everything's good. So it depends on the alarm. Now, there's going to be an alarm that's going to be sounding pretty soon. And I'll, I'll get to that in a little bit. Now, blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm. Another name for Israel. That are scattered all over. It's called Zion. Zion is, is a mountain. But it's also a name that he gave Israel. Now why sound the, the alarm. In, in, uh, sound the alarm. The, the, the shofar. Why sound the, the, the shofar. Because the day of Yahweh's judgment. Tribulation. Are going to be upon us very soon. See. And, and, and I am not talking about a pre-rapture or rapture theory that uh, Manuel Lacunza, which was a Jesuit, started in the 11th or 16th century. And it was, it was a, it's a theory that he wrote a book about the rapture spirit called, is calling. Now, this theory, he acted like he was, he, he, he tried to portray that he was a, a Jewish rabbi, but he was a Jesuit. He wrote a book in between the 16th, I'm sorry, the 11th or the 16th century. And he started uh, writing the book about rapture. There's no, there's no name, there's no, there's no word in the Bible that says rapture. There, there's none, just like the word Trinity. There's none. There's, there's, no, there's no word. Because he is at Hud. So now this man makes this, this rapture theory and he writes this book. And this is a Jesuit, Jesuit. He takes this to the Romans and they accept it. He takes it to um, uh, the other, another church and they take it. And today we have what is called the rapture theory. It's not the truth. Saying to people, are you rapture ready? 
Are you rapture? He can come at any time. Number one, that the Most High does not instill fear to anybody. Do you know what the word rapture really is? In Latin, it's called rapturo. In Spanish, it's called rapto. Okay, rapto or rapture is when, when a little child is being abducted and they're taken away. They're taking you away. They're, they're, they're taking you away. That's not... That's not kosher. That's not biblically speaking. That's not, that's not true. And then you have a lot of brothers and sisters waiting for the rapture that can happen anytime while you're sleeping, while you're there. That is not, that's not biblically. And then it's another thing that they're saying to most Christians that it's going to be before the tribulation. We are going before the tribulation because you need to be born again. And yes, you need to be born again and you need salvation. You need to confess and you need to understand, which is called, it's called a covenant of marriage. You're in covenant with marriage with him. So now a lot of brothers and sisters are waiting for the so-called rapture that I heard the other day, a preacher saying, it can come tonight, I'm ready. It can come next week, I'm ready. It can come in 20 years, I'm ready. See, he doesn't instill fear. That's to me, to me, that is like instilling fear. And his children. That's not the way it is. Let me let me explain to you what that rapture theory, what it is. Because they're saying, no, this is going to come before the tribulation. Really? Hmm. Well, let's see what it says. Now. Uh, <laughs> this is not some kind of rapture theory that it says, all aboard, ding, 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 come and ride on the express rapture bus. For it's waiting to take you to heaven. Really. How can you go to heaven? Or how can we go to heaven when heaven is not made for men? Heaven is made for spirits and angels. And yes, we are going to be transformed and our body is going to be transformed. And, but heaven is made for angels and Yahweh. He gave us the earth. Yeshua is coming here to put his millennium kingdom here. And then what's going to happen, this earth is going to be done away with. And what's going to come is called the new Jerusalem. Now that's called eternity. It's coming here. We're going to be in Jerusalem. So how can we go to heaven when we are between two opinions? We want to hear his word, but yet we're still doing things in the world. We're in paganism. How, how is that? How, how can that be? Well, I'm saved. Yeah, you're saved. You came out of the an example, symbolically speaking, we came out of the we came out of the well. Now we're outside. So now we're have we just gotta wait for the rapture to come and get us. No, you gotta walk. You started you have to start walking with him. You have to start doing what is called covenant keeping. You have to walk hand in hand with him. This is what he's doing in these last days. He is restoring his people to himself. Because there's a lot of them, they're not teaching this. This is nothing new. The truth always prevails. The truth always triumphs. The truth is the truth and there's nothing beyond that. So it says, now, now it says, um, in the book of Psalms, in the book of Psalms 115, 116, look at what it says in the book of Psalms 115, chapter 115, uh, uh, verse 16. You are blessed of Yahweh, which made heaven and earth. The heavens, even the heavens, are Yahweh's. But the earth has he given unto the children of men. And then in the book of Genesis, it says that he has given us authority and dominion over all the earth. Because remember, we are representatives here on earth of him. We represent his kingdom. We are messengers. We represent his kingdom. So he gave us the earth. Let it be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, hallelujah. In the book of Joel, let, let's go to the book of Joel. Joel chapter number 2, verse 1. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm. In my holy mountain, let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of Yahweh cometh, for it is near at hand. Verse 31. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood 
before the great and terrible day of Yahweh to come. And it shall come to pass that whoever shall call, shall call on the name of Yahweh. Not on the name of the Lord. The Lord is not a name, it's a title. And I explained in one of the teachings that I had not too long ago. All those, look, and it shall come to pass, wherever you see Lord, they have taken the name, the four letters, Yohavehe, and they have placed Lord. That is not a name, that is a title. And it shall come to pass that whoever shall come call in the name of Yahweh shall be delivered for out of Zion in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. And Yahweh has said, and in the remnant who Yahweh shall call, he's calling his remnant. See, he's not calling everybody. He's not. Because many are called. He doesn't say he calls everybody. Many are called. But the only one that he, that he really chooses are the ones, is his remnant. He's calling the remnant. Of those 12 tribes. He's calling the remnant that are obeying his voice. He's calling the remnant that are obedience to what he is saying. Now what, now what, not what Pastor Patty Cake says. Not what, not what Luli Bell says. But what he says. Hallelujah. Now. This is another place that I want to take you. How you know, how you see that really this is a rapture. That, that rapture is a theory. Do you remember that Yeshua was praying for his disciples when he was here? And then he prayed for all, for us too? Okay, this is in the book of uh, John chapter 15. Whenever you can, please read it. He's praying to the Father. And look at what Yeshua said. Verse 1. John 17, 1. These are the words Yeshua. Yeshua spoke and lifted his eyes to heaven and said, Father. The hour has come, glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. Now, look at, look at what it says on verse 15. Now this is, that he's coming, yes, he's coming, and saying, oh no, he's coming, because are you rapture ready? But look at what Yeshua says in verse 15. I pray not that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from evil. Now, what evil? It's calling tribulation. He's saying, don't take them out of the world. He's saying right there. But keep them from evil. Protect them. Guard them. What evil? Tribulation. The tribulation. Okay? Now, how could this be? Well, look at look at what look at what Matthew, Matthew chapter 24. Look at look at what it says. Now, when that shofar is gonna sound, it's gonna meet one of the show. Okay, one of the feasts is called the feast of the trumpet. Now, this shofar, uh, this shofar is going to sound when he is about to get all his elect from the four corners of the earth. And this is going to happen immediately after the tribulation. Look at what it says on, on Matthew chapter 24, verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. The moon shall not give her light, and the stars sh shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Verse 30. And then shall appear a sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of the trumpet, of the shofar. There's going to be alarm. There's going to be a sound. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heaven unto the other. So see, there doesn't say here that he's going to take us before the tribulation. If we are not being obedient and doing paganism, do you really think that now there's going to be a rapture ready theory that he's going to take us? Because why? Because, because we, are, we are born again? See, somebody can tell you they love you and I love you and I love you. But if they are not showing it with through actions, it's nothing. We can worship him with our mouths, but if we don't worship him with our hearts, it's nothing. So this rapture theory, that is... <laughs> That's wrong. That is not even the truth. And yes, 
Some will be dead and then we, he, he's going to resurrect and those that stay alive and we are going to be transformed. And that's another teaching, which I'm not going to go into that right now. But see, we, there's nobody living here before, before, the, 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 before the tribulation. See, Yahweh's coming for, his judgments are coming for two reasons. He's coming because he is going to condemn all those nations that have done our brother Judah. They done a, a very wrong to Israel. He's coming to destroy them. But now the second purpose is for him. <laughs> He's going to punish his disobedient children for not obeying him. And he has no exception of anybody. See, we always look at the most high and he is a merciful, loving, and, and, and let me tell you, the, the love that he has, nobody has. But see, everybody also wants to talk about that, but they don't want to talk another side of him. It's called Elohim. The word Elohim means judges. He's a judge. And let me tell you, he's not just a judge. He is just. Not like a lot of judge. They sell themselves. No, no, no. He is a true judge, and he is just. And he has no exception of anybody. This is not for you to be scared. This is reality. This is truth. This is why we have to know who are we listening to and who are we obeying. Because he is restoring his house. He is restoring his, his people. He is restoring his sheep. Restoring to what the way he wants it, the way it used to be. Prayer should be in your home. Are you praying the way you should? Do you pray when you eat? Do you seek him? Right now, Passover is coming. Not Easter. That is not Easter. Easter came from the word Easter, which is a pagan deity. Passover, Yeshua, Yeshua is our Passover lamb. We are celebrating Yeshua in the Passover. This is when he says, do this in remembrance of me. We don't, we don't do Holy Communion every time we feel like once a month. No, we do it once a year in Passover. We need to understand the scriptures. Hallelujah. And then we're celebrating eggs and Easter and, and a bunny and, and all these. What is this? Passover is coming. Are you ready? See, now I can tell you. Are you ready for that? Are you ready for Passover? Are you, do you know what Passover means? That is a very powerful, powerful, powerful feast. It's not the feast of the Jews. It's the feast of Yahweh. It's one of his feasts. Hallelujah. Yeshua pray, Father, I pray to you, do not take them. Do not rapture them. The chosen one out of this world, which means planet Earth. But that you shall keep, protect, and guard them, the chosen one, from the evil. What is evil? Tribulation. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 30, verse 7, it says, It is written, Alas, for the day of Yahweh's judgments, tribulation, and anger will be great, so that none in man's history will be like it. I will be the it will be a time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob's trouble are his children. Whether they're in Christianity, whether they're in Judaism, with, no matter where they are, it's called Jacob's trouble. Jacob's trouble is his children that are disobedience. Yahweh's judgment, tribulation, and anger. But the chosen elect ones of Jacob will be saved, protected, guarded, but not raptured to heaven. Of it, tribulation here on earth is going to be three and a half years. This is where... This is where the powers of darkness are going to have a feast like never before. Because they know that it's, it's a short time. But all those that are obeying him. See, we confess salvation and, and we have to understand and, and it's called a marriage covenant. But once you're saved, we need to keep on walking. And yes, Yeshua, everything was done on the cross. But see, the cross, he's no longer on the cross. He's no longer, he's no longer, he's no longer buried. He's very much alive and he is the king of kings. And most Christians are constantly pointing to the cross. Instead of pointing unto heaven where he's at. Constantly crucifying him over and over and over again. Because that's it. They don't know anything beyond that. And what he is, he is, I, he is our covenant 
partner. He is our husband. We walk with him. We talk to him. We obey him. We obey the feast. We obey the, 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 the Sabbath. We obey kosher. And that's another teaching. I'll bring some time. Because he, not Pastor Patty Kay, not Lulu Bell, whoever prophetess she says she is, they cannot change whatever is happening to the world, whatever is happening to, to his children. The only one that can change this mess is him himself. That is it. Unless if you have ears, it says, if you have ears to hear, hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches, to my bride, hear what he is saying. Don't look at me. Don't look at others. Look at what they're saying. Are they focused more on just to motivate you and everything's going to be okay and you're going to have shalom? Well, it's biblically speaking in the book of Ezekiel, in the book of Jeremiah. He says, don't listen to them. Don't listen to them. Because they are false prophets. Hallelujah. And all the prophets of the Most High were killed because when they, when they brought... The word, it was very strong. It brings conviction. It brings revelation. It, it, it kind of, it, it shakes you up inside. Not for you to have fear. Because what he's doing, he is just telling us what he's about to do. He says, I do not do anything until I reveal my secrets to my prophets. And the prophets reveal it to who? To his children. To his children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you know that even angels do the will of Yahweh, do his commandments? Did you know this? And let, let's go to the book of Psalms 104. 104, Psalms 104. See, everybody is a, is a, is a Bible teacher in these days. Well, the Bible says this, and the Bible says this. Well, don't tell me what the Bible says, and why don't you show me the way you live? Because even devils know what the Bible says, and they tremble. They know who he is. See, it's not what the Bible says. We know all everybody knows. Even, even people that are atheists, they know what the Bible says. They know what he says. It's what, what do we do with it? Do we obey? How, do we, how are we living? How do you treat your children? How, are, how is your family? Do you pray? Do you, do you worship him with your heart? Or do, you, or do you just go to church once in a while just because? Just because. Hallelujah. Well, I'm already on the book of life. And, oh, uh, let, the, let, the, let the scriptures interpret the scriptures. Hallelujah. Look at what it says in the book, uh, in, in Psalms 105, 104, uh, verse 20. 104, I'm sorry, 103 verse 20. Bless Yahweh, you his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of the word. Even the angels that are more powerful than us, they do his commandments. So here we are that we are lower than the lowest, because we are, we, we're flesh. And then we don't do his commandments because Pastor Patty Cat said that you, you should not do his commandments. Now, who's telling you this? The word or, or a man? Who's telling you this? Who do you believe more? Do you believe his word or do you believe man's word? Hallelujah. We need to understand on what side are we going to be because we cannot be in two sides. Hallelujah. Now, bless Yahweh, you his angels that excel in strength, that do his... Yahweh's commandment, and hear Shema, the voice of Yahweh, which is his word. Did you know that the fallen angels are here on the earth? And they did not obey the will of Yahweh? And they are on the earth, and guess what they're doing? They're going to and from the earth seeking whom may devour. How do they devour? They want to teach the same things that they... They want to teach disobedience. They want to teach rebellion. They want, to, they want to teach anything that is country, it's against the word. Just like the serpent, the, the snake in the grass that was in, in the Garden of Eden. Don't think that today is no difference. Don't you agree with me that there's so many, there's so many synagogues and there's so many messianic temples and there's so many um, 
churches today? Don't you think that we should be really walking in more anointing? Don't you agree that there's there's tapes and videos and there's there's so much knowledge that we have it all over? But yet, spiritually speaking, we're weak. Well, how is that? How is that possible that in, that, that in the, the apostles, when they were walking, they didn't have no Bibles. They had no tape. They had no, they had no, they had no, but they had the anointing. What's missing is the anointing. Where is the anointing today? Where is the fire of the Most High? Where is it? With all that, with all that literature and with all that Bibles and with all that, the tapes and with all the DVDs and with all the movies that we watch. And all the encouraging words and all the, all the motivational pastors that are motivated. Where is the anointing? Where is the anointing? Yeshua said in the last days, many hearts, many of the hearts of many of my children are going to be cold. They're going to be cold. It's going to be cold. They're, they're not going to have any love in them. So where is the anointing today? We need to say let your yeah be yeah and let your nay be nay. Let your no be no. Now, who do you who do you say that Yeshua is? Whom do you say that Yeshua is? Now, since I cannot hear you, and please, if you can, write it to me. But I am going to tell you who he is. This is who my king is. The Bible says, my king is the king of the Jews. He is the king of Israel. He is the king of righteousness, Melchizedek. He is the king of all ages. He is the king of heaven. He is the king of glory. He is the king of kings. And he is the master of all. He is the lion from the tribe of Judah. That is my king. He is the sovereign king. No means of measure can define his limitless love. He is in, uh, endurably strong, entirely sincere, eternally steadfast. He is immorally graceful. He is imperially powerful, impartially merciful. Do you know him? Do you really know him? Do you know him? He is the greatest phenomenon that ever crossed the horizon of this world. He is the Elohim son. He is the sinner savior, centerpiece on civilization. He is unparalleled, unprecedented. He is the loftiest ideas of literature. He is the highest personality in philosophy. He is fundamental doctrines of the true theology. He is the key of knowledge. He is the wellspring of wisdom. Do you know him? Do you know who he is? Whom do you say that he is? Whom do you say he is? His life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. He is the doorway of deliverance and righteousness. His word is enough. His mercy is everlasting. He is the pathway of peace, shalom. His love never changes. His grace is sufficient. He is the, uh, the gateway of glory. Do you know him? Do you walk with him? Do you covenant with him? Do you know who he is? His yoke is easy. He's easy. His burden is light. His reign is righteous. I wish I could describe him, for he is indescribable. He is incomprehensible. He is invincible. He is irresistible. You cannot, <laughs> you cannot get him out of your mind, out of your hand. You cannot outlive him. You cannot live without him. He supplies strength to the weak. He sympathizes and he saves. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleanses the leper. He forgives the sinner. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captive. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the aged. He rewards the diligently. He beautifies the meek. I wonder if you know him. Do you know him? I am describing 
who I walk with. I am describing who I eat with. I am describing who, when I go on that car, who I'm driving with. I am describing, hallelujah, who I dream about. I am describing, hallelujah, the one that was, the one that is, and the one that is to come. For our eyes has not seen, our ears has not heard, or enter into our hearts the things that Yahweh has prepared for those that love Him. Love Him. Loving Him is not just talking about Him. Loving Him is obeying Him. Doing things for Him, for He delights in the praises of Israel. Faith, without faith, we cannot bring any delight but for end. Faith means obedience. Faith means obedience. Without obedience, we, we cannot, we cannot, he cannot delight in us. In the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter, uh, chapter 11, verse 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him which means obedience. Without obedience, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh unto Elohim must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder, rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Seek him. The Pharisees could not stand him, but they found out they could not stop him. Pilate could not find any fault in him. Herod could not handle him and the grave could not hold him that is my king do you know him do you know him that is my king that is the anointing that is the word that comes out of my mouth hallelujah in season and out of season that's who i serve daily hallelujah and i am not ashamed to speak about him because he is not ashamed to speak to my father about me, the things I have done. And I will speak to him until the day I die. Because he is the owner. He is the master of my soul. That is what means to be born again. We give. He begins to take orders to our souls. And our souls, our spirit man begins to do his will, not our will. But yeah, we keep on doing the things we want to do because we think that's the way it is. Because we have some kind of Pastor Patty K telling us that this is done away with. And that is a lie from the pit of the living hell. It's a, it's a lie. It's a lie. Do you really? He wants everything that is good for you. For you. Because he knows he created you in his image. He created you in his likeness. There is nothing that he doesn't know nothing about you. He knows everything about you. Even when you go into prayer. Even when you are rebellious. Even when you think I had enough. He knows what's going on in your life. There's no human being. There's no. Not even our mother can understand us like that. None. No. Hallelujah. He knows who you are. He knows your he knows your necessity. He understands. Hallelujah. But see, when he comes because of your prayers and others praying for you, and he answers that prayer, whether it's fast or whether maybe it takes time, but he answers. What do you do then? Do you keep on doing the same thing or do you keep on seeking him? When the word is spoken, when his word is spoken, it's different. There's an anointing that flows. That you want to keep on hearing that word. Because it's doing something different in your life. That's called his anointing. Not everybody had anointing. The first king of Israel was called Saul. King Saul. Even though King Saul was anointed, but not because Yahweh wanted to make him king, it's because the people wanted to make him king. God will give you what you want, even if he knows that that's not good for you. Did you know this? Did you know this? He will give you the desires of your heart. He goes, since you don't come in agreement with me, I will come in agreement with you. You will get what you want. So don't, don't, don't complain to me later on when I give you that King Saul. Don't complain. But see, there was a man after King Saul. His name was David. 
And David was a shepherd of the sheep. See, a shepherd of the sheep is the one that always going to smell, excuse me for saying this, but it's going to smell like, like dung. Dung, da -da dung, 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 dung. It's gonna, you're going to smell like dung. You're gonna, because everybody that has problems will come to you and they throw your problems against, not against you, but they need to, you know, they need a shepherd. You got an earache? Well, come on, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prepare for you. You're, you're limping? Don't worry about it. I'm going to carry you on my shoulders. That's what a shepherd does. That's what a shepherd does. A shepherd is not to look good and motiv motivate people. No, a shepherd is, is guiding the sheep, is protecting the sheep. It's guarding them from the wolves. It's feeding them the correct food because sheep cannot eat any kind of food. This is where the word comes in. Hallelujah. So he says, you don't come in agreement with me. I don't have a problem with that. I will come in agreement with you. We need to be very careful what comes out of our mouth. He will give us the desires of our heart, even if it's not good ones. This is why if you're going to move, whatever it is that you're going to do in your life, put it in prayer. Father, is this what you want for me? Always, always consult him. And believe me, he's going to guide you in the right direction. But see, sometimes we, we let our emotions take over. We let our emotions take over. Sometimes we marry the wrong person. Sometimes we go to school when we're not supposed to. Sometimes we begin to have children and we're not even ready. Sometimes we get in debt with a car that is $500 a month. And, and we say, oh, because <laughs> you want to keep up with the Joneses? You got to be off your rockers. Well, the Joneses are not there to pay your, your electricity or your, your utilities. So see, we need to understand the difference between obeying and doing what is right and putting our emotions. And when we put our emotions involved, when you get angry, don't make a decisions when you're angry. Do not do that because you're going you're gonna to make the wrong decisions. So what he's doing in these last days, see, his anointed power, when he uses, when he has called a person to bring the word in season and he has anointed that person. That person's life is not their life. It's not there. It is his. For you, just like Yeshua, just like Moses. Not every pastor patty cake and not every lully bird, lully bird kind of, you know, prophetess that says that she's a prophetess or whatever, whatever she is. That is not of God. You will know when somebody's speaking the truth. You will know because you feel it in your spirit. The Spirit gives you revelation, knowledge on who this person is. Hallelujah. Do you know? Do you know my king? Do you know him? Because that is who my king is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn around and repent. Change your direction. Repent means turn around and stop doing it your way. And begin to do it Yeshua's way. Begin to do it his way. How does his way is? I go to church. I No, no, no. You need to do it. But not all about, let me tell you this. Not everywhere where you hear the word is his word. Including in Messianic places or temples. Not everywhere you see the word synagogue. Not everywhere you see the word church. Not, not, not everywhere you see non-denomination or denomination. This is why a lot of brothers and sisters are hopping from church to church. Because they haven't found it. But when you really found that somebody speaking the truth. You cannot wait until next time to hear it again. Yes or no? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he's different. His word is different. His power is anointing. It, gives, it makes you think it's different. It's totally different. Your life begins to change. And that's what it's all about because he's restoring. He is restoring his sheep back to the fold. He is restoring Israel back to his commandment. He is restoring his children back to, back to, back to the, the Shabbat. He's restoring his people. Hallelujah. Not because the law saves you. What saves you is the blood of Yeshua. Please understand that. You begin like right now what he is revealing to you is called revelation knowledge. Return and repent with a repented heart. Hallelujah. He's different. He dresses different. He speaks different. His feasts are different. His Shabbats are different. He walks different. 
His anointing is different. His kingdom is different. Yeshua is different. His children, hallelujah, are different. And he's calling you to repentance and come back to him. And don't just go to anywhere where they go, go in there. But if something is wrong, don't walk out. You run out. Run out. What is Yahweh's way? Yeshua said to his disciple, this is the way you should pray. Avinu. Avinu means our father, which thou art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. The name means Yahweh. Your kingdom come. What kingdom come? In the millennium. Let your kingdom come in the millennium. Your will be done. What will? His Torah means heavenly teachings, instructions, commandments, feasts. Be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yahweh is preparing us, teaching us through his word, the Torah, in this world. He's teaching us. He's, he's preparing us in this world because we don't belong in. The, he's preparing us in this world because he's get, getting us ready, not in the rapture. There's no such thing. He's getting us ready to obey him for the world to come, which is called the new Jerusalem. See. Yahweh does not love us because we are good. But, but Yahweh loves us. But Yahweh will make us good because he loves us. Let me say that again. Yahweh Elohim does not love us because we are good. But, Elohim, but Yahweh Elohim will make us good because he loves us. Isn't that powerful? Hallelujah. Now, I hope these teachings have helped you. And brother, with this, I love you. And if and when you uh, if you know the Shema, sing it along with me. Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Echad, Baruch Shem Kevo. Malahuta Leolam Vain. Oh, hear Israel. Yahweh our Elohim. Yahweh is one. Blessed be his name and his glorious kingdom forever and ever. Amen. Shalom Alechem. Peace to you from First Yahudi Messianic Temple on Lake Placid, Florida, and thank you for supporting our ministry. Thank you for your donations. See you next time.